welcome to the Old Westbury Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so blessed today to be here. Um, we are grateful for this beautiful day that the Lord has made. We have warmth here in the church. If you are watching and viewing online and you're nearby, you can still make it. It is very warm here. <laughs> We are happy to have you. There is strength in numbers. <laughs> but if you cannot make it, we do welcome you nevertheless. And uh, I would just like to ask all of you to please stand and join us to begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you that you have allowed us to have this blessing to worship together in unison, in your holy temple. We thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for our Sabbath school lesson that we are about to receive. We pray that you may be with each and every Sabbath school leader uh, from the adult Sabbath school class as well as our little children. We pray for a special blessing for them and for those who are viewing online, we pray that you may be with them also, dear Lord. We thank you, we ask for your blessing, and that you nourish us with your word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And if you would go ahead and turn to, in your hymnal to number 340, 340, Jesus saves. I guess we were enjoying it so much. You may all be seated. <laughs> Little James wriggled and grimaced as his sister forcefully pulled him down the cobblestone street near the docks of St. Louis, Missouri. Arriving at the church building with his tattered and too short trousers, his small, bare feet stumbled down the steps into the dim church basement. There were no windows to shed light on the other children's faces who had gathered to learn letters and numbers by candlelight. Welcome, James, beamed Reverend John. We make our own light here, he said. In the children's book, The Steamboat School, Deborah Hopkinson reveals the story of John Barry Meacham. 
how he was born a slave in 1789 in Virginia, how he worked and overcame seemingly insurmountable obstacles before running the church tallow candle school. On February 16, 1847, Missouri state law was passed that prohibited Negroes and mulattoes from learning to read and write and assembling freely for worship services. The school was shut down and Reverend Meacham was arrested. How strong do you think one's faith grows when you have worked your way out of slavery, worked to free your parents from slavery, and freed your wife who has been sold as property to a location that is hundreds of miles away. Undeterred from his mission, Reverend Meacham and others built the Floating Freedom School on the Mississippi River. A school on the river would technically be in federal jurisdiction and not subject to state laws. A floating school would provide access to the privilege of literacy and hope for a brighter future. Approximately 50 years later, Edson White, son of Ellen G. White, felt the need to reach out to the black community. Inspired by an appeal written by his mother in 1891 titled, Our Duty to the Colored People. In 1894, he outfitted a steamboat called the Morning Star on which he and others could live and conduct schools for the illiterate along the Yazoo River in Mississippi. As we enter into February celebrations of Black History Month, we should recognize the work is not done. I will leave you with words that Ellen White penned in the Southern work on page 17. The converting power of God must work a transformation of character in many who claim to believe the present truth, or they cannot fulfill the purpose of God. They are hearers, but not doers of the word. Pure, unworldly benevolence will be developed in all who make Christ their personal savior. There needs to be far less of self and more of Jesus. As Christ in the fullest sense represents the Father, so we are to represent Christ. Friends, today I just want to encourage you in whatever capacity God leads you. Be a morning star. Amen. Daily ask for the Holy Spirit to equip you, to give you discernment. If someone in your midst is marginalized, denied equity, denied access, denied dignity. Be the source of light that ends a dark night. Directly after our mission spotlight, we will welcome Elder Larry Valaro, who will lead our Sabbath school lesson, uh, dealing with debt, it's lesson number five. May the Lord bless you today greatly. More than a hundred years ago, a literature evangelist, Philip Rieke, got on his bike and rode to the middle of nowhere in Australia to share the love of Jesus with people he encountered. He sold books that impacted thousands of lives around the world. In 2022, a small group of Adventists representing multiple countries met together in the United States and rode their bikes from Washington, D.C. to St. Louis, where the GC session was held, in tribute to Philip Rieke and his ministry. They shared Adventist literature along the way. Well, we're riding from Washington, D.C. to St. Louis, and we've just finished eight days of riding, just three to go. We are in Madison right now in Indiana and every day we just get up and we ride into the sunset so we are heading west. Each day we're riding about 100 to 120 miles uh, which for those of you working in kilometers is around 160 to 190 kilometers. Uh, yesterday it was hot it got up to 40 degrees Celsius that's where I'm from I, I think that's about a hundred. The first freeze day was terrible for me it's what rain and cold. 
I wear five clothes and uh, even five clothes I still shivering but the, the weather got warmer I, I feel better and I, I can feel that I get stronger now. For me the most inspiring thing has been the fact that people are interested in taking the books. The opportunity to share the gospel, to share the truths of God's word, to share valuable literature with people so that they might experience eternal life themselves. That's just what it's all about. I think in the early days, um, we knew that there was going to be adventure. We knew that there was going to be opportunities to share. Uh, of course, there's the cycling. And I think the whole experience for me has brought together uh, my faith, sharing it, um, and something I love. In this trip, I can do cycling and I can sharing the ministry, selling the literature for the people in America. And this is a wonderful experience for me. The thing that will stick with me is uh, just step out in faith and see what God does. Uh, for me, I'm going to say I will go much, much more often. On Sunday, June 5, 2022, the eight riders arrived in St. Louis. They completed 1,147 miles of cycling through the mountains, heat, and rain. They honored Philip Rieke's legacy by passing out more than 4,000 pieces of literature. More than a hundred years. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be in the nice, warm house of the Lord this morning. Amen. So we, this week we had lesson five, dealing with debt. So the memory verse on Sabbath was Proverbs 22, 7, which states, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Um, and basically the theme of, of the week was how biblically, as Christians, you know, we should have as little debt as possible. Um, you know, there are times when it is necessary to, to take on some debt, like a mortgage. Um, but again, there are methods where you can pay down that debt as, as quickly as possible, and, and we'll get into some of those as, as we go uh, through this week's lesson. Okay, so a couple of the points um, on Sabbath. Uh, it spoke about how, as Christians, like I said, we should not be in, in, in debt. Um, it talked about this tw at least 26 references to debt in the Bible, and every single one of them a negative. Um, and although it's not a sin to borrow money, the you know the Bible talks about always negative consequences of of, of doing so. Um, it talked about how the ant prepares for the future, but many gifted with reasoning powers fail to prepare for the future immortal life. Um, it talked about how people usually go into debt because they have no cash to spend on something, so they borrow some or request a loan. Um, and, and this is not a new problem, although in, in current times it seems to be more and more of a problem. And, and if you listen to the news, I know with everything, with inflation, the cost of everything going up, it's harder and harder for people to, to, to meet their obligations. Um, just for the basics of life, and, and more and more people are going into debt, um, and the worst kind of debt, which is credit card debt. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as, as we go on. Um, so th there's stories of people in the Bible who went into debt in the Old Testament for distinct reasons, and Jesus told pa parables regarding debt. The Bible contains practical advices on, on finances, so we'll talk, some of the things we'll talk about are the source of debt, whether debt is a sin or not, how to get out of debt, and then we'll also talk about some surety and get-rich-quick schemes and loans. I was uh, 
amazed at the, the surety part of it. I never even realized um, how the Bible um, is pretty, pretty plain about how we shouldn't guarantee other people's debt. Um, you know, and I, I know that comes up in, in the world at times, and the, the lesson gave some good examples of, of how to deal with that. You know, the, we, the lesson also talked about how um, we, the Bible talks about they plead that they must first owe no man anything, but the fact that they are in debt does not excuse them. I saw that they should render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And some feel conscientious to owe no man anything and think that God can require nothing of them until their debts are all paid. Here they deceive themselves. They render to God the things that are his, and everyone must bring to the Lord a suitable offering. Those who are in debt should take the amounts of their debts from what they possess and give a proportion of the remainder. Um, and that's from councils on stewardship. They were talking about how, you know, whether you're in debt or not, that doesn't um, relieve you of the obligation to, to give tithes and, and offerings. So we'll move on to Sunday. And we'll talk about the source of debt. And First Timothy 6, 8 says, and having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. Um, again, it, it's, it's a, a choice that we can all make. Um, you know, you can look at what you're bringing in and you have to try and live within those means um, and not get caught up in everything, you know, everything you watch on TV, all kinds of entertainment, you know, that everybody's trying to get you to spend, spend your money on, on things of the world and material things. Um, but everybody should really um, try to, to live within their means. Um, Deuteronomy 21, 1, and 1, 2, and 12 were the, the readings for, for Sunday. Would anybody like to, to read those for us? Deuteronomy 28, 1, 1, 2, and 12, yes. It's Deuteronomy 28, 1, 2, verses 1, 2, and 12. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. So here we could, we could see that, you know, God is, is telling Israel to be a lender to other nations, but not to, not to, not to be a borrower. Um, the lesson talks about the reasons people get into debt. Um, and the first one they listed was ignorance. Um, and amazingly, even educated people are financially illiterate. You know, um, the schools don't do a great job of, of preparing you for, for coming out of school and, and being on your own financially. And a lot of people get in trouble because of it. Um, it's so easy since the invention of credit cards to just go out and spend money that you, that you don't have. Um, and, that, and it really, if you don't pay those credit cards off at the end of the month, you end up paying, it's, uh, you know, multiple times the price of what you paid for the, for the, for the item that you bought. Yeah, it's okay. the same for colleges. You can get all those student loans and just, it just accumulates so quick how much, and then you get out of college with this huge debt 
to try to have a job that takes forever to get it paid off. Yep. The, the price of tuition has way outpaced inflation. You know, it's, it's, it's I mean, I think it's, it's one of the, again, an, uh, another way that they, you know, the whole system is, is kind of rigged against people trying to promote that you have to go to the best college and you have to spend all this money. Um, when, you know, I see very, uh, a lot of very successful people that have gone to community colleges um, and, and state colleges that are much cheaper and come out with no debt. Um, it, it's a friend of mine's son right now is in medical school and when he, he's finished, he's gonna, it's gonna be more than a mortgage to, that he's gonna owe. So, you know, you're starting off way behind the eight ball by, by, by doing that. Um, so again, uh, you know, one of the things we can do to, to get financially literate, there's plenty of, of resources with the internet. There's plenty of magazines you can read. Um, I know there's a, a, a good um, podcast that to, to listen to. There's this guy named Dave Ramsey who um, he, he gives financial advice and, and you know, he, he really actually, uh, his, uh, his, his advice is, is really agrees with the biblical principles. Um, he's, so he's one of the good ones to listen to. Um, the second reason that the, the lesson says for financial difficulties is greed or selfishness. Um, and, and like I was saying, it, it's just people wanting to live beyond their means. Um, yes, Tanya. Uh, also, not only wanting to live beyond their means, but you look at what someone else have, or let's suppose, especially younger people. I remember when James and I started our ministry, one of the pastors said, remember, you're young, these other people that you see having houses, boats, whatever, they have worked for a lot of years. So don't go into debt just because you're coveting, desiring what they have. You know, be content with what you have. Eventually, you might get to that. And don't go into the, you know, what social media portray. Oh, you have to have this if you want to be famous or whatever. No, you don't need that. Right, exactly. And that's what First Timothy 6, 8 is saying. Um, it says exactly that, you know, if you have food and clothing, be content with what you have. Um, Pastor? Yeah, a couple of online comments. Uh, going back to when we were talking about the student loans, uh, Dr. Carl said student loans can be investment, but many are predatory. Um, another uh, comment here online is in Sunday's lesson, as to the third reason for debt, the lesson states, without adequate health insurance, the vast majority of people could never afford to pay for adequate health assurance. And we are at the mercy of insurance companies the, that refuse to pay for medically necessary procedures. How do we avoid getting into debt in that circumstance? <laughs> All right, Mr. <laughs> Accountant. <laughs> well, that is probably the most difficult circumstance to, to be in. And, but even in those cases, when, when hospitals know that you don't have insurance, you can negotiate with them, and, and they get a, a comp component in, in their reimbursement rates for, for they call it charity care, um, where they're required actually to, to charge people less or do certain things for free. And, and you know, ho hospitals especially are usually very willing to set up a payment plan so that it doesn't have to wipe you out um, if that does happen. And again, um, if, it does, if it does happen to you, um, you know, we'll talk, I think Wednesday or Thursday in, in the lesson, we talk about how to get out of debt if you are in it a little bit. Yeah, and you know, this is one of those examples of why we have to save and not be blowing money on things trying to keep up with others because exactly. we never know when something's gonna happen where we need to have funds. Of course, a, a medical procedure could be 75,000 and it's hard to save for that, but savings does help. Absolutely, it's, it's a, Tanya. I'm sorry, but as far as the, the hospitals, I just read in the conference uh, for, you know, plan giving, uh, uh, the majority of healthcare, hospitals, doctors, and so on, you can call them and if you can prove your means, your financial status, I'm, 
I'm, you know, I'm not talking people that don't want to pay the bill. Right. That if you don't have the means to pay, a lot of times there's forgiveness of that, you yes. know, that, or they ask you to pay the bare minimum, whatever you can afford to pay. Yep. So all you need to do is call the, the, the hospital, the doctor, and prove your, your financial means. Yes, they're usually very willing to work with you. And like I said, they get a component in their reimbursement for exactly for that. So they're, they're really required to do that. Mangela? So I just wanted to read something um, for our edification. Um, life is the most difficult exam. Many people fail because they try to copy others, not realizing that everyone has a different question paper. Never compare yourself to someone else. Many times we get into trouble because we compare ourselves to somebody else. Um, our situation is completely different than someone else's situation. So if you follow the biblical principles, it is most times we have no problem. Obviously with health and everything, there are ways also to come out of it. Yep. Diane? I was going to wait until we got to terms, but... Um, one of the, you know, as I was reading through the lesson this week and I saw, for example, with the Israelites, right, they had, this is all the way on Thursday, they had their term limits, right, um, which was seven years or six years, because by the seventh year, you needed to forgive if the person couldn't pay. We find ourselves, you know, many of us look at our mortgages as investments, but we find ourselves with a predatory system, because mortgages were not always 30 years. I'm comparing it to this six year or seven year term mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. Mortgages used to be 15 years. But what happened as we started to desire more and more, what the banks did was they offered 30 year mortgages so that now you can afford a much more expensive house, mm -hmm. keeping your payments similar to what it would have been, but strapping you to that mortgage for your entire life. Yep. God wants us to be free. Now, it's gotten so out of control that in New York, if you try to buy something on a 15-year mortgage, it's at least in the region of New York that we live, it's almost impossible. But we, by feeding into this whole consumer mentality and wanting more and wanting what everybody else has, we have also enabled the banking system to take advantage of us as a, an entire community, you know? Yep. Same with car loans. They used to be three to five years. Now they're offering seven year car loans. Seven, I've even seen eight year car loans. Um, so, so yeah, um, again, it's trying to live within your means and I mean, you, like I said, you, with interest rates what they are now, you, you're paying double and triple the price of a car if you if you take a seven-year car loan at you know six seven percent is what they're getting now. Um, so one of the things for for those of us, yes. Mic, use the mic. Mic, uh, yeah. Can you get a mic? Oh yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, my question or my concern will cons will be related to my sister. Uh, regarding a mortgage, mortgage, uh, as you are as you are brother in the financial world, maybe you may have you should have an answer to my question or to, to that concern I'm going to share with you. Uh, it happened that uh, most of the time someone would like to buy a house, but that person is not qualified for the bank loan, or his income is very low, so that person will be looking for what you call a collateral. Most of the time, it might be somebody having a good income, and then because you have a good income, you, you're going to help that person who is not qualified to buy a house to buy a house. Now, is that something wise to do? No. To According to the Bible, no. no. And we'll get into that uh, on Thursday's lesson when we talk about being a surety. Uh, they're saying the, the lesson said, in the, and, and they have you know, Bible verses that back it up that we should not be sureties for somebody else's debt. Um, so the, the one, one thing I was just going to say, as parents, you know, one of the best things we could do for our kids is, is to teach them not only to live within their means, but like Tanya said, and I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to, to talk about that a little bit, is just to encourage our kids not only to live 
you know, within their means, but to, to be saving constantly and, and investing because, you know, I've seen it many times in, in my career that people have, that have just started investing early, by the time they're in their late 40s, 50s, they have plenty of money. And if, if the, a medical issue comes up, you know, they have the money and, and they're able to, to pay off their mortgages and then, and then have cars with no loans. Um, so it's really important at a young age to start saving. And even, even though I say with, at, at a young age, it's really important to save at any age and, and every age. Um, so we talk about the greed and selfishness. Um, the third reason people find themselves in financial difficulty is, is like the issue that was brought up about health is personal misfortune. So the lesson talked about the serious health illnesses, um, and it says their path is more difficult and, and, and harder to overcome. Um, but again, we, we gave you some things that, that you can do, as, you know, especially negotiating with, with the provider of the services. And, and like I said, most of the time they will offer you to, to pay the, uh, the expenses off and you pay it off just like you do any other loan. And we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll, as we get through the, the lesson, we'll talk a little bit about how to attack that. Um, so a couple of last things for Sunday. Um, you know, the lesson said to desire to bear your own weight and, and not be dependent is right. Um, and that means, again, to have no debt, you're independent and, and you're not beholden to anybody. Um, and, and, and that's a good thing. Yes, Tanya. i like to just say an encouragement because I know we all, at one point, might make a mistake in getting debt. So then you hear all of this, I said, oh, you know, I'm bad, and, and you see no way out. Pray that God will help you get out of the debt, you know, pay your debt, and then don't do it again. Yep. But don't feel like, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that they go into desperation because they see, well, I was not supposed to do that, now I'm alone. No, you're not alone. Like you said, there's many plans for you to get out of that. Don't feel bad. Learn with your experience and don't do it again. Right. It's similar to sins, right? You, you, can, you can fall and, and sin, but Jesus forgives us and, and you, you work not to sin the next time. Um, so you, you can deal with that the same way. Um, there, you know, there are methods to, to help you get out of it as quickly as possible. And, and it, you know, we'll get to that. Um, you know, so a, a great thing to do, speaking about living within your means, is, is really to start to track your monthly expenses and see exactly what you're spending your money on. There's, I, you know, guarantee that there are things that you could save money on wi within your monthly budget. Um, whether it's, you know, making coffee at home rather than buying Starbucks or, you, there's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> like, we like mind. Starbucks. Come on, like. <laughs> but I guess if you're in debt, you better stop. If you're, right? right. If, you're, if if you're in debt, you could use that to pay down the debt. And <laughs> once you're out of debt, you can go back to Starbucks. It's like a car payment. Isn't it? <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. So, anybody have any other questions about uh, Sunday's lesson before we move on to Monday? All right. Uh, let's. Yes, go ahead, Angela. So the lesson also talks about uh, spendthrift marriage partner. So <laughs> what do you do if your partner spends like crazy? And, you know, what do you do? What would What's I do? <laughs> did, <laughs> I, you take away their credit cards <laughs> and don't give them access to the bank account. <laughs> you go as far as saying Change enough the password. <laughs> You, uh, you could go on, on Experian and, and lock their, uh, their credit so they can't open new credit cards. <laughs> what if you end up with divorce because of that? <laughs> that yes. That's much a reality. She's right. We, I actually had a friend that they, uh, one would spend, one would not spend. Uh, they were on the verge of divorce until they had to get counseling that was the and then counseling for their financial life because it was going to destroy their life. Uh, I see a lot of marriage counseling people that they say, check with your partner how is their spending habit 
before you get married. Of course, after you get married, you have to go into counseling, yep. but that's a serious problem as well. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of times you listen to these stories about these exact situations and the, the spending the spending spouse, once they do some of this counseling, you know, they, they do a total 180 and, and once they see debts being paid off and how much better shape they are financially. So getting the counseling is a, a definitely a good idea. So get a hobby, do something else, <laughs> yeah. not just shopping. Yeah. There are many other things to, to occupy your time. Exercise and Go stuff. to a library, <laughs> cooking, get a book. <laughs> cooking and <Read>. cleaning. <laughs> Yes, uh, if the sister were teaching or the Bible teaching, advise us not to be on debt. And I think God has a reason for that. It, my experience told me that, my experience tells me that when you are so much in debt, it's going to be very difficult for you to pay a legitimate tithe or offering. So I think the advice is, it is very important for us as God church members to regulate our debt, okay, to keep it under control so that we may be in a position, okay, to pay a faithful tithe and a faithful offering. So the point is, when you are so much in debt, it's difficult for you to pay your tithe and offering. That is a problem. Yep. Two things. Um, I, and I think the lesson touches on the, this, this, this week. Um, being in debt and spending are different things, right? Spending gets you into debt. But we can be poor stewards and still not get into debt. And, but we can be exceptionally um, poor stewards. And this, um, well, they said confession is good for the soul. So, um, so this lesson this week um, has been really helpful, you know, to me personally. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say, sometimes in some situations, we have to address the spending in the marital relationship or even in an individual, in, you know, with someone who's single. Like alcoholism or drug addiction, sometimes it's that serious. Absolutely. And it's not that easy. And so you think, my partner should just be able to get a grip of their spending. But there are some of the same centers that are stimulated by drugs and alcohol in the brain that are stimulated by um, uh, um, spending money. So, you know, it's, be, it's more than just get a hobby or something like that. Sometimes people really need the counseling and they need the strategies to really help them. And, you know, I have sent more than many other lessons. There are times when I'm like, you know, on my phone like a Pavlovian dog, just sending, you know, links to people. But this one really spoke to me and I've been sending links to people, uh, you know, just so that we can be more, the entire lesson is good, but this one this week has been, has really resonated. Mm. Yeah, Sister Gloria. And um, talking from Brother Dominic's um, point, I would say first to be faithful with the tithe and offering, and then the debt afterwards. God is faithful, as I've always said, Absolutely. and I will tell you my own personal experience again, not the one I told before, but just this week, somebody gave me a gift, and I also got my monthly check, went to the computer to pay my debts, my tithe and offering first, and then when I went to pay my um, utility bill, my light bill, I saw zero, and I said, what? And so I went into the account, and on my light bill, I had a credit of $207. Wow. That's God's faithfulness. Absolutely. So let us put him first, Absolutely. and he will take care of the rest. Absolutely. When you, when you are faithful to God, he teaches you how to be a good steward. Because when you are buying whatever it is, your thought is, do I really need this? God gives you that inspiration whether you should buy it or not buy it. Yep. Sorry, just in case we don't get to Thursday, what that um, gentleman <laughs> said, um, what happens if you um, enable, I'm an enabler, 
uh, how do, now that I made a huge mess, how do I get out, I can't stop now helping somebody with the mortgage all the time. How do I get out of, it's huge. Now, now because now it's my fault too. It's not their fault. Well, um, so you, did you guarantee the mortgage or you're just helping pay it? Everything? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it's funny because, you know, before this, this week, I, was, I didn't realize that it was a bad thing either. Um, so, but the Bible does say that we shouldn't do that. Um, now that you're in that situation, you know, I, I think you have to make the best of it and, and follow through with it and, and, until it's, it's done and just don't do it again. <laughs> Can I take two seconds to address what she says? Yeah. So the banks do have uh, a help for people. I remember when the, the market crashed and my, my, I call her my mother. She did the reverse mortgage or tried to do it and she was in debt and she couldn't manage. I sat on the phone, it took us two weeks, with the bank, she can't afford, here's her income, here's her husband's income, sat with them and said, refinance it to the point where its the interest is lower so she can manage it. And that's what I did with my mortgage. Paid off my mortgage, thank God, but I started at 25 years old. If you have kids, tell them to start younger and pay it off. There's a 30 year mortgage, refinanced it down to 20 years, I couldn't afford the 15, but if you drop the interest, the payment will stay the same. And I knocked off 10 years of my mortgage. And I encourage anybody to do that. Get the monkey off your back, it helps. Absolutely, and, and you know, once you, if you do your monthly budget and you, you find where you can save some money and then apply that extra money to the mortgage and to pay it down faster, you know, that's when we get to that part of the lesson, that's how you pay your debts off, is you, you, know, you pick your, either your, your smallest debt or highest interest debt, and you attack that first, and, and whatever money you can, you put towards that till it's done, and then, then you go to the next debt, and then you have the money you were paying towards the first debt that you can apply to the, to the next debt, so that everything gets paid off faster and faster, and, and before you know it, you, you, know, you're out of, you could be out of debt. Um, can I, uh, you know, I believe that God is a God of possible and not a, a God of the impossible, right? So on the times that we're trying to help people, my father used to not sign for anybody. And people used to get upset with him and say, oh, you're so mean. And he's like, I will, you know, just buy stress for myself without wanting the stress, right? So but for the ones that w we're trying to be kind, and didn't know. I believe that those are the times that you bring to God. Yep. Bring to God your need. You were trying to help. You did something now that's causing you stress and problems. Bring it to God. Ask God for the solution. Claim the Bible provinces that he is the God of the impossible to bring solution to your problem. Amen. Yep. Okay. So Monday's lesson is following godly counsel. Um, just the, the last thing on Sunday. So one of the things I wrote down was life's best things, simplicity, honesty, truthfulness, purity, integrity, are not to be bought or sold. So, you know, there's things other than financial things to, to, to dwell on and, and focus on. Um, so Monday's lesson is following godly counsel. And they talk about is, is, death, uh, is death a sin? And Colossians 3, 5 says, therefore, to put death to put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And we, it starts by saying, dead is not a sin. However, sometimes it may be the consequence of a sin. Greed and usury, covetousness, scam and fraud, the love of money, unfaithfulness in tithes and offerings, if one of those sins has gotten us into death, we must seek God's forgiveness and help and his help to abandon our sin. Um, you know, the lesson went into 1 John 2.15, which says, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in, in him. Um, so again, we, 
we just have to focus on on God and the things of God, and not necessarily all of the, all of these material things that can can get us into debt. Um, God wants us to be debt free, so He's given us useful advice in His Word. An important piece of advice is to put our faithfulness to God first and to give back our tithes and offerings. Um, you know, it's amazing with the tithes and offerings. You know, when I first became a Christian and found out about this, you know, I, I wasn't tithing, and I was like, "How am I going to do this? This that's a lot. It's a lot of money." Um, and honestly, you know, God. Like it says, if, if you're faithful to God, he'll be faithful to you. And I feel like I don't even feel it. I just, you know, send the money and I don't even think about it. And I feel like it doesn't even affect me at this, at this point. It, um, so it definitely is, you know, if you are faithful, God will, will definitely bless you. Um, Larry, yes. can I say how it affects us? It affects, at least for my family, it affects us when you have a car that's over 300,000 miles and it's running perfectly, you know, and then you take to a dealer and they're like, how is this car running? Because God is blessing us. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that. My cars, are, I drive them to 200,000 miles and they're, they're fine also, so you're right. <laughs> Emerald? I'm reading to the topic, is depth of sin. So when I first came in the country, you know, I was debt free. <laughs> okay. What did he say? When he first came to the, this country, he was so then I realized the country, the country wants you to be in debt, only then you can survive, looks like. So when I look at it, it's debt to sin or is it a consequence of sin? So I'm not sure. I go to buy a car, I have the money, but they say, no, your credit score has to be this size, so you need to have a loan. So I had to get a personal loan just to get, a, <laughs> get into loan so I can get a car. So I'm just, telling, I'm just wondering, you know, uh, the world takes us in a different way. So we just had to watch what we get into. And again, I don't have the answer for it. Can you elaborate, like, how is our country leading us in what we want to do? Diane? I think this is, a, this is I, I love what Emerald just said. And many of us as immigrants have that issue. You come here. And so I'm glad that this is a world, this, this lesson is being distributed all over the world so that those who are still to come are not going to fall. No, because it's like a black hole. When you step out of the airplane onto the tarmac, you sink right into that hole of death because you're totally clueless. Nowhere else does the government back all the banks and back all the loans and make it so easy for people to get themselves into those desperate situations. And the schools don't teach it. You know, they don't teach, the, they don't teach it in school. It's crazy. Yeah, a couple of comments here online going back to our mortgage. Um, it says, you know, just one extra payment a year on the principal of your mortgage can knock years off of your mortgage. Uh, we had that a couple of times, yeah. you know, even if you spend a few dollars a month on your principal, that, that yeah. helps a lot. It says here, um, another one, uh, it's very sad. Everything, it's about money and more money. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it really is. Unfortunately, to live, you need money, and, and it is a big part of our lives. You just can't, um, you can't make it an idol. So, yeah, supporting Diane and Emerald, you know, as, as, as I say, as immigrants, when you come here, you do go into that black hole. But um, <laughs> there's something that for all of us, you know, and I guess as a church, this is somewhere that we can um, think of educating our people, right, and our children. Because if we don't have that, I mean, I remember <laughs> my daughter just started working and I said to her, you have to save half of your paycheck. And she said, what? And I said, yes. And um, I had her sign up for her 401k and she called me a couple days ago and she goes, mom, she goes, I have no money. <laughs> She's like, you made me sign up for this stupid 401k and now there's no money <laughs> for anything else. And I said to her, you're gonna learn that that money isn't there, and you're going to learn to live without it. And, and in right? 20 years, she'll thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and that's the thing. We start small, and that's what I said to her. You're young now, that's when you start. And if you start um, cutting your, you know, as my mother used to say, you look at something, you cut your eye, and mo keep going, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> you, it's not everything that you see that you must have. Yeah. And you have to learn to live within your means. I remember when we were, um, I was pregnant with my daughter when we bought our first home. And um, my husband said, 
this is the amount that we can afford. Because he's like, you might decide that you don't want to go back to work after you have the baby. And he made sure, and we had friends who said to us, you can afford so much more. And he's like, no, this is what we're going to afford because if you decide you're not going back to work, I need to be able to afford this mortgage. Or if something happens to one of us, I need to be able to afford that mortgage. And so many times we find ourselves keeping up with the Joneses and wanting the bigger house and the Mac mansions, and then we put ourselves into debt, right? And if we plan according to what God has said to us and we, we be content with what we can afford, we would find ourselves in a lot a better place. Yep. So this society promotes instant gratification. I want it. I want it now. I want it now. I, our children also get used to this society and the friends and everything that goes on around them. It is sometimes very difficult to teach them. Even though you say things, yep. they have to learn it themselves. It's very hard for us to force them to do the things that they don't want to do. Yep. It comes with experience. And the experience comes with having a close relationship with God. And that's yep. the most important thing. Once you have a close relationship with God, He'll guide you every aspect of your life. Yep. Emerald? Yeah, in regards to kids, I think uh, as parents, I think we are the ones who put them in that situation because we give them all that they want when they're little because they, are, they, you know, they use their emotional part to get to us. And then when they grow up, we say, oh, you should not spend more. I'm like, what are you, what are you guys talking now? So I think it starts off early on because we need to also make sure our kids cry a little because most of us who came here have gone through hardship, so we know what it is like. Yeah. But then when you don't show the kids what is hardship, they're not going to understand what, it's, what they need to do when they get there. Yeah. I have a car for <laughs> Emerald. <laughs> <laughs> I am on the opposite spectrum too. We, we, I remember years ago, we used to go to a toy store the day before Christmas because we did not know that it's a big deal. You have to buy this many gifts beforehand, put it under the tree and this and that. My kids hold that against me today. What do you say for that? <laughs> They're probably better off, <laughs> David. I think this lesson is so timely that um, the way God just moved this lesson to come at this particular time, we, we have our treasurer and elder <laughs> teaching a lesson about debt. An and accountant. <laughs> right now, the U.S. is deciding on raising the debt ceiling. There's a debt calculator, you can pull it up, 31 trillion and counting daily that the U.S. owes in debt. Can you imagine, they brought in last year the most money they've ever brought in, $4 trillion, and they had to spend $5 trillion. It's like you can't run this country on $4 trillion. I just don't understand it. And they talk about, even, even you know, the other side now talks about you know, bouncing the budget in 10 years, when all they have, would have to do is adopt the 2019 budget and it'd be balanced today. So when they talk about balancing the budget, I don't believe a word they say. You know, and these principles we're going through are good, but we also have to zoom out for a minute and understand that, that the devil is doing this for a reason. Yep. And in every penny that you're in debt, you can't help the cause of God. And you have to understand this is not accidental. And, and I appreciate what uh, uh, someone said earlier about it, addiction. It, this, is, this is a satanic assault Absolutely. on every Christian in this country that you take your money and you sink it somewhere other than the cause of God. Because, you know, we've talked about the tithe. We only give, what, 35% of membership pays tithe? Yep. Why is that? It's not because of debt, because we know if you follow the Bible, you give, God will bless you. But if we could double that and gave 70% of our membership and tithe, what could the work do? Right. You would have pastors in every church in every place in the world, but we can't because, and again, just like this country, it will fall. And when we look at these things, we know in the Bible it says that the, 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 the money is one of those things that's going to bring about the demise of this country. And, and we're headed. What was it? Did you say 13 Th trillion? 31. 31 30, trillion. It, it's under, we cannot sustain this. And we as Christians need to see that this is more than just a new car or a new home. 
and that our eternal salvation is wrapped up in these things. Satan knows it, and Jesus knows it. That's why he gives us these principles. And so, yeah, very timely. Yep. I real quick, because then I want to just get to Tuesday before we were running out of time quick. <laughs> yes, just remember the Joseph story. Uh, Joseph came out from his land and ended in the United States of his time. But everything that Joseph touched, it was prospered because God was with him. Yep, absolutely. All right, so let's quickly get to Tuesday, which is how to get out of debt. Um, <laughs> this is, the, this is the, the day that we really, I just really wanted to go over. So Proverbs 22, 27 says, if you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched from under you. So being in debt, you know, you're, like we said about being dependent, you're dependent on the lender. Um, you know, it, it's, so, it's a great independent feeling to be, to be without debt at all. Um, the lesson brought out how to try to pay your debt as soon as possible before you're so in debt that you cannot pay it anymore. Um, and again, credit cards are a great thing, they're convenient, but you should pay that balance off every single month because the interest rates are, are crazy. They're, you know, it's 20%. And they, one of the good things the government ever did was they put on the, your statement and it tells you how, how long it would take you to pay off if you pay the minimum payment. And you could see how long it would take to get a basic, you know, if you want a TV, you might as well just wait and save up the money and buy it when you have the money. Um, so your commitment to God will help keep being faithful to God in your tithe and then follow the next steps. And I, the lesson did a really good job. These steps are really good, uh, and they're in most plans. Again, I keep going back to that Dave Ramsey, and he talks about, he uses the, these steps in how to get out of debt. So the first step is, is do not go into debt more, that, go, do not go into more debt in, in no way whatsoever. So one, if, whatever debt you have, just the first thing you have to do is, is say to yourself, I'm not, I'm not borrowing anymore. Like I said, you, you know, you, you got to write down every, every penny you spend for a couple of months and see what, what you're spending your money on and, and you'll be able, I'm sure you'll figure ways to save. Caesar? I work in behavioral health and one of the things that we try to teach people is about discipline. Saving money is a discipline. And you really got to buckle down and structure yourself Yep. Spending money, that's impulse. You can do that any time. Any time. You can always just blow money. And one of the things in my travel, I see a lot when you go outside of New York, you see a lot of these payday loan advancement. Now they're even doing car title advancement. And the rates are like 500%. Yeah. And it's not regulated. Nothing, whatever they want to charge. And, and, and people really go into these black holes of debt that they could never get out of behind just trying to get a $300 advancement on the paycheck. However, as Christian, we got to do, and David hit, up, hit this, uh, talked about in, in his sermon last week, we got to do the total opposite of what everybody else is doing. Exactly. It's the same principle we practice in behavior first. If you want to change, do the total opposite of what you've been doing. Exactly. And, and, and we cannot continue to fall into these debt trap houses. Exactly. Diane? Uh I'm going to talk about pride and not the bad one. The, you know, being able to conquer that, okay. being able to conquer that should, would bring us such a sense of accomplishment, being able to, you know, pay, up, pay down your debt and de um, develop some self-discipline. I was looking at um, 3ABN um, this week where Jill Morricone was talking about when they got, just got married. And I'll just fast forward. She talked about how close she and her husband got over g trying to get out of their death and just bonding over, you know, just being able to have oatmeal every morning and, you know, and, 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 but just being of one mind in how they were handling their finances. So for those of us who are married, it can also bring you together yep. trying to get out of your debt. All right, so let's just finish this Tuesday. It talks about when you get... God blesses you with extra money. Don't spend it. Use it to pay down your debt. Arrange your debts from largest to smallest, like I was saying before. Focus on paying that smallest one first and reduce it with any extra payments you can. Once that debt is paid, you use the money you were paying on that debt to reduce the next one with extra payments. And eventually, you'll have more money available to pay the greatest debt. 
And, and you know, th that simple approach will help you get out of, out of debt. Um, I just real quickly, you know, we're, we're, we're basically out of time, I'm sorry. Um, you know, the last day of the lesson talked about get rich quick schemes. So just be very careful. There's no easy money to be made in investments or anything. Um, you know, when you, when you hear things like the Bertie Madoff scandal and this latest FTX scandal, it all came from them offering unrealistic returns on money. Bertie Madoff was guaranteeing 20% a year on your money. And, and amazingly, very sophisticated investors gave, gave him their life savings. People that invest pension funds. Um, a really interesting story, I have a client who was married to somebody who was able to invest money with him through a family connection. And, and she, she, she like was very particular about everything. And, and so she called them and, and said, said to them, like, this doesn't make sense to me. And basically, by talking to them, she was like, I'm not giving them my money. And the husband lost all of his IRA money, and she didn't, but just by asking some questions. And, and if things, things seem unbelievable, they, they usually are. And, and the, the best way to, to, to invest your money is to invest a little bit every month and don't, and don't worry about it. You can put it in an S&P index fund, and it will just continue to grow. Um, just a little bit about the, the surety thing. Um, you know, the lesson brought out that we should not be guaranteeing debt for even, uh, even relatives. Um, God doesn't want his children to be responsible for other people's debt and obligations, not even the poor's debt. We may help people in need to pay their debt if we have that opportunity, but we should never become responsible or put up the security for the debt. Um, on the other hand, trying to get rich is a source of financial trouble. All methods that promise quick, unbelievable earnings are surely a scam or imply excessive risk that may be, lead you to financial collapse. So, like I was saying, you gotta be prudent and ask questions before you invest your money. And most times, it, it's best just to use index funds. Um, they usually beat most money managers. Um, at the Talking about loans in the Bible times, Deuteronomy 15.1, at the end of every seven years, you must cancel debts. Uh, after everything we've studied in, the, in this lesson, do you guys think it's okay to, to request a loan? So the lesson says in the Mosaic Law, God acknowledged that loans were necessary. However, he limited the debts to seven years being the longest. Um, and we know that loans today can be much longer, and at this point, even car loans. Um, requesting a loan is not a sin, however, a loan must be the last and unavoidable solution. For example, buying a home or other things that are actually necessary will cost more than we can have in cash in the short term, and, and even then, you can pay those mortgages off faster, like Pastor was saying, somebody online said, if you make one extra principal payment a month, it'll, it'll cut a lot of years off your mortgage, um, and going back to the way to get out of debt, the same thing. If, um, if you have no other debt and it's only your mortgage, when you have extra money, just make a principal payment. Um, and it cuts down a lot of the interest that, that you'll end up paying. Um, so in those cases, we must always seek the best possible solution to getting the best rate and requesting the least amount possible. And if you are in financial difficulty, like Roxanne said, you can call the bank and negotiate with the bank. If you if you're, have medical issues, you can call the hospital and, and negotiate with them or even the surgeons if, if, if a surgeon is involved. Um, so there are, there are ways to deal, to, to deal with all this. And, and then lastly, from, from Ellen White, she says, make a solemn covenant with God that by his blessing you will pay your debts and then owe no man anything if you live on porridge and bread. It is so easy in preparing your table to throw out of your pocket 25 cents for extras. Take care of the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves. It is the mites here and the mites there that are spent for this, that and the other that soon run up into dollars. Deny yourself at least while you are walled in with debts. Amen. That was easier to get through at the time than I thought. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You know, um, Larry is a, a CPA, and 
I'd hate to put him on the spot as he's walking off, but wouldn't it be nice to have him do a couple of seminars on Sabbath afternoon? No pressure, Larry, no pressure. All right, so Larry said he'd be happy to. Everyone's a witness to that, right? Did you guys hear that? So uh, let's pray about how we might be able to put something together. And Yeah, after tax season, <laughs> April 15th. So we'll have a seminar April 16th. <laughs> No, but that, that's something for us to pray about and think about, Larry. That would be nice because there's a lot of information that he could share with us and could help us. And so, um, you know, that's, that's a good idea. Thank you, Tanya. My wife suggested that to me to suggest to Larry to suggest to you. So <laughs> thank you for watching online. Thank you so much for being with us. Remember your uh, offerings for Sabbath school. You can do that online for those that are watching here locally. We'll be picking it up, but you can also give online. Let's close with a prayer. Father, thank you for this important lesson. Thank you for this important uh, quarterly that we are going over these things. It's definitely bringing up questions, and that is good. So, Lord, please help us as we talk about these issues. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back here at 11 o'clock. God bless you. Happy Sabbath.